Hey guys, uh, here we are. Uh, we're gonna attempt another job here today. Uh, have to wait for it to cool off a little bit, but uh, that's about, uh, I guess, five o'clock, six o'clock at night, and uh, it's just starting to uh, cool off a little. So uh, anyway, today what I'm gonna do is Sumo Springs. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna crawl underneath this, take these uh, bump stops, uh, off the the uh, van and replace them with these ones apparently uh, what they give you is another uh, 2800 pounds of uh, load at a 50% compression so I figured I'd do this now because uh, at some point I'm gonna have the uh, 50 gallons of water in here and uh, I don't want to be jacking on the uh, the, the jack that comes with it uh, on the vehicle to uh, install these so hopefully uh, you can actually hear me here because uh, what I'm gonna do is uh, crawl underneath the van and uh, do that and yeah they're come side of the com are these ones for the front and uh, so I'm gonna have to lift both ends uh, just take the uh, weight off the suspension and uh, install these these ones will have to be uh, apparently you put them in with uh, soap on them and it provides a lubricant and uh, you just uh, screw them on and uh, then uh, both ends are uh, supported with the same product so anyway I'll uh, bring you underneath show you uh, what I'm gonna do and uh, we'll get at her okay so anyway uh, cue the music Okay, so here we are. Man, there are the original bump stops for the van. Now, there's little uh, slots in here, and you're just supposed to, you know, just uh, take a, a screwdriver or chisel or whatever and uh, bang these, and it just, you know, spins off, and the bolt is on the other side in, inside the frame here. But what's happened is the bolt in the frame the weld that holds the bolt, bolt inside the frame uh, let go and now the whole assembly is spinning with the bolt up above so what I've done if you can see it here is I've jammed a screwdriver in there hopefully taking up the slack in here between the bolt and the uh, yeah in the frame and uh, hopefully I can get it off now uh, yeah th this is being a real pain uh, the only other thing yeah, I don't know what else I can do here, but anyway, we're we're gonna work on this and just see if I can get this damn thing uh, to where I can I can actually uh, get it out. So anyway, I do have it jammed in here, or it seems to be. Yeah, it seems to be jammed. 
So now, of course, it's going to want to unscrew and do all kinds of funky stuff. So, and I don't know, I've got a wood chisel here that's pretty dull. I don't know if this is going to be enough to just gently move this off. Yeah, and you see, I got to get it, th this piece wedged into the bolt, so I think I moved it a little bit, but oh yeah, I've still got maybe a quarter of an inch of the bolt sticking out, so anyway, it's not there, not there, yeah, this is kind of a bad situation here okay there's a no oh I got something there Something seems to be, uh, it seems like it's loosening, but it's hard to tell, eh? Okay, guys. So, as you can see, I got the uh, one off on the passenger side. Uh, yeah, just for reference here. Uh, yeah, there is a, uh, it's just a stud on the inside. So, if I were to have uh, gotten into this... Yeah, I guess I could have welded a, a bolt on here to turn it, but uh, yeah, it's kind of a pain, man. These, these things aren't really uh, made to come off, I guess. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to try the other side here. I have um, uh, WD'd it here. Hopefully uh, it'll help because uh, I noticed when I took this one off, I had to eventually cut it, uh, cut it off. And uh, there was quite a bit of junk on the top of the uh, bolt, and I could see where it wouldn't pull through. Uh, the threads and uh, the other thing is that uh, uh, yeah what was the other thing I'm just spinning here uh, um, yeah who knows hey you know what just been one of those days eh? so anyway I'm gonna try and give this one a go and uh, see if it's any better with uh, the lubricant on it and hopefully Hopefully, I don't have to cut it off. Now, I did go out and try to get bolts for this, but I can't find them, so I figured I might as well make a big mess and uh, then see um, what is actually needed uh, to fix this all up. But uh, if I can get this one off, I'll just leave them both off because as they stand now, they're, they're within, oh, geez, they're about two and a half inches before they're even touching the uh, axle so uh, or the spring uh, mount, so I'll uh, I'll just leave them. Yeah. Well, it's turning, but so did the other one. I think what happens is it starts to turn, and then all of a sudden it tightens up. So uh, hopefully, and I, I could see when I uh, looked at the other bolt, there was only one very small place on one side that it was uh, tack welded. So anyway, this is this is probably the point where it started tightening up on the other one because it's starting to pull the uh, the old thread through, and if there's any junk on the threads, it, uh, you know, starts to bind. So, anyway, hold, keep my fingers crossed here. Yeah, see, they do, you know, in a, in, in a real world, they should uh, back off nicely, but uh, like I say, you don't know what the hell to expect, eh? Okay, guys, here I am, under the van. And as you know, uh, yeah, over here I uh, had to cut the uh, bolt off because the weld broke. Now I went at this other one on the passenger side, and uh, same thing happened again. And what I had to do was 
cut the bolt off push it through now luckily there is a little bit of a channel here so they must be anticipating this crap but anyway uh here is the actual unit say that i uh, that i took off and as you can see i had to cut the bolt off because it would not come through and what it did was it broke the welds and then uh it just it, it, in the in the body frame it just spun now i'll show you how this is uh, set up in here and uh as i said earlier on a go forward basis what i'm gonna have to do um is i'm gonna have to find new bolts to go on these sumos the, the ones that i'm putting in uh and then i'm gonna have to build a piece of metal off of here and down so that i can stick it up into this area and i'll show it to you here now i get a little closer here okay guys i feel like i'm all thumbs here today but uh anyway Okay, so there is uh, the area. You can see the, the hole for where the uh, sumo, or not the sumo, the bump stop come out. And luckily there's a channel in here that uh, once I put the, uh, the bolt on a piece of metal, I can slide it in there and use it to hold the bolt, position it. And uh, as I'm screwing in the new sumo, I can uh, uh, use it to hold it and uh, hopefully get enough uh, torque on it with the... Uh, uh, th there's not really uh, th all the force here is up and down so this this bolt is just holding it in position so i think if i can hand tighten it with um the uh lock tight on it uh, it should be good it's supplied with the thing but uh now th the thing that happens here on the driver's side is i'm going to just slide back here a little just show you what i'm looking at here we got shrouds this is like for uh, the spare tire uh, to stop it from uh you know getting too hot and then the exhaust is in there and uh i'm telling you what this side is even worse so uh, you know i'm glad i did the other side first just to kind of know what was happening but uh when the head uh, w when there's enough room to get underneath these sumo or underneath i keep on saying sumos under these bump stops when you can torque uh, get them down far enough that uh should they break off the weld um you can get an, uh, a reciprocating saw up into there and cut the bolt off and then in that channel above it there's enough room to uh, uh, get that bolt out uh, I just used a, a piece of metal there to uh, just fish it out but uh, anyway uh, my recommendation is uh, don't do this and uh, I'll tell you what it's uh, it's a pain now this gizmo here uh, that holds the um, you see the, the the actual uh, thing here you can see there's uh, little marks in it and they must have a special tool to do this because I, I think that when you're uh, when you're doing this you have a tendency to uh, maybe um, uh, shock the uh, welds on the uh, on the bolt and, and that's what breaks it because at some point as, as the bolts coming out it uh, it, it wobbles and so it's not a continuous force so if it was me to do it again knowing what i know now i wouldn't do this uh do i want the sumos absolutely but uh, i don't think i'll do it myself it's not worth the uh the bs factor uh you know for go to somebody who has all the tools and uh you know what ask them if they have uh you know put these in before because this is a vehicle that's only a year old and still there, there's enough junk, I, I guess, on the bolts to stop it from coming through. It's, uh, it's like a lock uh, lock washer with a nylon piece on it. Not that that should matter. But, uh, yeah, the, the dirt and the, co the combination of the dirt on the top of the bolt. And I don't know if you can see it here. If it's focusing. But, anyway, uh, yeah, that's as much as... That's all that come out. But it was enough for me to get underneath it and uh, cut it off. And now... Like I say, I have to go through the uh, process of uh, uh, MacGyvering something to uh, fish a bolt up into there and then uh, uh, screw the, the sumo onto it and uh, into that area and uh, uh, hopefully it'll, it'll hold. And I don't have any doubts that it will, but uh, it's just all about prep, eh? Okay, guys. Okay, this is what I ended up with. Oh boy, they're hot. Yeah, I shouldn't have moved them. But anyway, as you can see, I just welded them together. And hopefully, when I put them in, that'll just uh, 
given enough uh, pressure against the side because it's a thin area in there to uh, allow it to uh, seat. So anyway, I'm going to go and jack up the van now and give myself the room I need and see if I can get these suckers in. Okay, here we are doing the one on the driver's side now. Pretty tight fit in here, man. It's, uh, you know, you gotta, I think you have to work quick and uh, try and get this done. Okay, now. Okay, done. Now, I guess I'll drop, drop it and uh, jack up the front and put the, the front ones in. I'll just have to go get a pail of uh, soapy water and uh, see what kind of aggravation that can give me because I'm sure it's not going to disappoint me. And uh, then once I get on the road, I'll uh, kind of let you know how they feel if they feel differently. It's hard to tell. Okay, so here we are, uh, the Sumo Spring Supports, uh, I don't know exactly uh, the, the term for them are, but uh, these, you can see there's grooves that uh, matches the coils in your uh, front suspension, and uh, they simply have to be slid in and then secured with uh, uh, strap ties to the actual spring. So. The suspension has to be decompressed. Got to get the wheel maybe hanging in the air so it gives you room up above. Uh, an option might be to take the tire off. Now, I've taken a couple stabs at this and uh, I just found it was, uh, I wasn't comfortable with the fact that uh, I was just jacking on one corner and lifting the van up. I wasn't getting the uh, extension on the suspension to let me up there. And uh, the other thing is that uh, uh, I didn't feel safe doing it. So at any rate, uh, I have uh, reached out to uh, Ray Outfitted and that's where we are this morning. Uh, we spoke with uh, Madison and Rainer and uh, they are going to install these for us today. And then that'll be the last uh, component of this Sumo uh, system that uh, we're putting in the van so that uh, it gives us more load uh, capacity uh, because uh, when we're full, we're over 9,000 pounds. Uh, we'll do a video on that too. Uh, I'm going to load everything right up to get the gas and the water and uh, go to a, a local recycling place uh, uh, where you bring stuff and see if they'll put us through their scales. So anyway, hang tight and uh, we'll uh, maybe show you uh, parts of uh, the installation and uh, what it involves and, uh, and maybe... Uh, an impression of uh, if I'm noticing anything. I definitely noticed the back and they've been on for a little while now and uh, there is a compression but uh, anyway we'll try and get some footage of that and uh, give you a, a final uh, uh, opinion on uh, what I think these things have uh, done for this van. So anyway hang tight. Yep. Never seen the van from Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to, yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, he'll be okay. Yeah, I'm not
person. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like, he, he, he buys the groceries, and then he's like, what do I have to get there? I'm like, okay, wait, because we don't have to get there, so we can just get there. Once it started, it just screws on, but it's yeah. the getting it started part. There we go. Yeah. yeah, see, I found that I, like I said, I, I couldn't get the room between the top of the wheel to feel safe, you yeah. know, because I knew I'd be moving the vehicle and it's up and yeah. uh, on one side. Now, popped out on me. Come on. Yeah. Easy. Perfect. Easy peasy. <laughs> With the right knowledge. So before measurements, you can see you're towed in on both wheels. Okay. Uh, so that would be wearing the outsides of your tires. Okay. Uh, so uh, rear camber, I can't adjust uh, without taking your brakes all apart and right. shimming bearings. And it's so close that I don't worry about that. Mm -hmm. Now, do you, do you feel that's just because putting those spacers in? Or was it something that was already there? Uh, what that could be is this would have been a line from factory right and you have put a lot of weight on the back axle which pivots the front yeah so yeah. and that's why every upfit we do we do an alignment at the end because mm -hmm. we have changed the geometry of the right. suspension yeah 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 because like you say uh with the 54 gallons of water and everything else it, it's got to change it eh? mm -hmm. yeah the way it sits yeah and always the best thing to do is do your alignment the way it runs. Right. You don't film that, I just get frustrated. <laughs> like this alignment machine. Some of the newer ones um, don't have the, the big mirrors that attach to the, the tires and that means it doesn't work on the RVs that have um, big bodies. And I like being able to do alignments on RVs because they chew up tires endlessly. You don't like that, huh, Mark? We love the KO2s. Yeah, we love it. It's a first modification. Yeah, it hurts your ears, right? Yeah, that's the what is it? What is it? Watch it. Watch it. Come on. What's going on? Your tires aren't aligned. I can hear it. <laughs> Misaligned tires are bad. They wear faster. We like our KO2s. We save them. 